So uh, I gave basically the same talk three years ago, before the pandemic. But th some things have changed, uh, improved ho probably. So yeah, I'm probably going to skip this. Uh, I've been at OE, or Open Embedded, for f 16 years now, I think. That's yeah. a long time. So why do you want to sign code, or what is code signing? So people want to attack our devices, at least some of them. And uh, one way to avoid that is to sign each piece of code that is going to be executed and verify it before executing it on the device. So, and we need to have some keys for that. Usually, we have them on, the, um, on our systems which builds the software, but it's hard to keep track of those. I'm going to uh, go into that in more detail. So, we have, uh, when we have signed the software, we can also recover from comp compromised devices because we can simply reboot the device. It can check the sources, uh, can, can check the images, fall back to a different image, which is still correct. And we can detect all that and make sure that the device is again running the software we intended to run. And by now we also have uh, some markets where it's uh, required by law or regulation to do that in the earlier talk that was just on the horizon, so by now it has arrived. So, uh, yeah, common use cases um, around the topic is we want to sign with different keys during development because not everyone should have access to the real keys, but we still want to do uh, signing during development to keep all this uh, verification signing code tested. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. There is some existing support in Open Embedded. We have uh, several BB classes for different software components, like for U-Boot, where we can sign uh, fit images, so kernel, init, RAMFS, and device tree. We can sign uh, the kernel modules, and we can sign the kernel itself using fit images, which matches, matches the U-Boot sign class. So that's an OE core. Then we have in uh, MetaRauk, we have uh, support for signing um, update bundles. And there's this uh, IMX code signing tool, for example, if you build software for the uh, IMX or um, layer scale processors, they can sign the bootloader. And that works in a similar way in uh, MetaFreeScale. Then there's also MetaSecure Core, um, it's a layer which collects several of these signing things uh, but mostly targeted at uh, PCs like UEFI. Uh, so that's not so useful on the uh, yeah, ARM or RISC-V embedded systems. And probably I've missed a few of uh, those uh, recipes and other layers. It's hard to get a uh, good overview. Ah, animation, okay. So there's also uh, the uh, secure boot sign tool in Meta Intel for EFI boots. So um, then there's a thing called PKCS11. That's probably something I need to explain. When we want to have keys uh, for signing, as I said, we want to have every developer to have access to the developer keys, so I can just clone a Git repository, build the image, and have something that uses all the verification steps. But we don't want to have everyone to access keys that are actually able to sign images that are going to work on devices in the field. Because that would be just too easy to, to lose these keys. You don't have any way to ensure that the key is actually only accessible by, by the few people who should uh, access it. So the way to do that is to use uh, cryptographic tokens or hardware security modules. So these are devices which have a very restricted API to them, or a physical interface, which only allows using keys, and you can't get the, get the key material back out. So you generate a key on them, generate a certificate, and use the public part as normal, but the private part stays in the device and cannot be extracted. So in the end, if you have the device in hand, you know that you have the only copy of the key. So that's the, the main benefit. There's additional support around these devices to 
make ba backups from one HSM of a Rwanda to a different one, but that can all be configured and controlled in a way that is uh, yeah, traceable and, and auditable. So that's a big difference between HSMs and yeah, simple private keys in a file in the Git repository or on a CI system or something like that. So yeah, we can use the keys, but we can't copy them. And the way the keys are accessed is using this PKCS11 API, which is a C API standard. And there is a companion standard uh, in an RFC, which is a way to address these keys using URIs. So you have a URI scheme, and then you have some parameters which are used to search for a key and access it. So in this case, I have a, the token has a name, it's from a specific manufacturer, and uh, the object, so the key itself, also has a name, which I can use to refer to it. And it's yeah, widely supported, OpenSSL, GNU TLS, and all the cri uh, basic cryptography tools support it already. So um, by now it should be clear that when we want to use HSMs in OE for signing, we also want to do this via PKC11 because it's the de facto standard. So yeah, we want to have better security. We want to uh, decouple the usage from the configuration because it should just work if I clone a, um, a repository. And in a different environment where I want to make my release, for example, in, in some uh, disconnected uh, room where only a few people ha have access, I want to change a few things, especially the key configuration, and do another build to get the uh, actual release result. So that should not have to touch different things or the different recipes in the BSP. And we want to ensure that we actually test the same code paths during development just with different key material. So I think uh, Open Embedded is the best place to integrate this. So a uh, small status update. Um, since 2000, we have used this code, which I'm going to show in a few slides, in several customer projects. It has <coughs> basically been unchanged. We have written a little bit of documentation, fixed some smaller bugs, and um, in the last few weeks, I've um, worked on pushing the, uh, the requirements for that in Meta Open Embedded. Initially, I thought I wanted to do that in OE Core, but it turns out that most of the dependencies I need to do this are not in OE Core, but in Meta OE, and I would need to pull like 10 or 15 packages into OE Core, and that seems to be uh, excessive at the moment, at least. Might be interesting to, to do that later, but probably not right now. And um, I've also split up the code. So there's now one layer for the infrastructure, this signing BB class, and another layer which is much larger than this uh, single class for showing how this all fits together in a QAMO environment. So, yeah. And I had to repair a few things like uh, kernel module signing with PKCS11 URLs because that just broke a year ago and nobody noticed. So, yeah, but that's repaired now. It's uh, going to be in 6.2. So that should be all fine now. So, um, um, they, they refactored, uh, so the question was where did it break in the uh, kernel builds? So the PKCS11 URLs uh, include semicolons and colons and so on. And they refactored their integration and uh, forgot to do some quoting. So a semicolon in a command line leads to some things missing. So that failed. But it yeah, was a pretty simple fix. So uh, there's code in this GitHub repository. The slides are online. I have a few more links in the slides, so get this PDF and uh, you can look at the actual sources. And in there is the infrastructure side, the signing BB class, and some example users which work in concert in the demo. There's a bear box which verifies the kernel, and the kernel verifies the root file system via the M verity. 
and also verifies its own kernel modules when they are loaded. And we can do system updates also with signed rock bundles. So, and now I'm going to be uh, going into the details of the implementation. So, the signing BB class is a single class which provides infrastructure for defining key roles. So, I have a role, for example, for module signing, for rock bundles, because I don't necessarily want to use the same key for everything. And for each of those keys, I get a native package which contains the development key as a simple file that can be used by recipes. And for a release signing, I can override this key with a different key by using a PKC11 URL in the local conf or in autoconf or wherever you get your CI configuration from. So that can be used instead of the local file key to do real signing within HSM. And because I want to test the same code paths with the PKCS11 uh, integration in, for example, the kernel or in RAUG or Ubud or Bearbox, I use SoftHSM, which basically emulates a, uh, HSM in software but provides the same APIs. So from the kernel's perspective, uh, key in a file on the disk looks exactly the same as a real HSM. So that simplifies testing a lot because I don't need the special hardware to do the testing. So as I said, one side of the uh, infrastructure are key providers which provide a role and it's imported into soft HSM and a recipe looks a bit like this. So I inherit the signing BB class define about provides, so I can have multiple development key providers for different use cases, if that's interesting. And I have some shell functions which set up the import, import uh, stuff, load the file, and commit it to the soft HSM database. So that's, uh, in the demo, there's a set of keys which are already imported, but you can easily yeah, generate your own keys and import them in different recipes. So at that point, you have your set of development keys and could override them in local conf with uh, URLs. And we have the uh, different recipes as users. So we have a few examples I'm going to th uh, go through now. And uh, I basically have for a recipe, I select a role like bootloader, kernel, rauk, or whatever, and get the URI which I need to pass into the project-specific build system. So for example, for kernel modules, it's pretty simple. I need to uh, set a kconfig variable with this URI, and this URI is extracted from yeah, the signing BB class information, which, loads, uh, which is loaded from the native package. So it either uses soft HSM with a development key or the actual key during release builds. So that's. In, in, uh, in my demo, it's a BB append file on Linux Yocto, which just enables the module signing. So I if there are any questions uh, immediately, please interrupt me. Otherwise, I think we should go through them at the end. So for example, in RAUC, um, compared to the kernel, where we have one package which includes the public key, as well as the modules which needs to be signed. So does both signing and verification. With RAUC, we have, um, in the RAUC package, we need to install the key ring. So the public part is separate from the signing part, which is the bundle. So we just use uh, OpenSSL to, uh, well, we extract the cert, the certificate, from the PKCS11 URI. There's a small helper tool now in MetaOE for that. So I get the certificate file back from the HSM, and I just store that in a specific form in my target package for AUG. And the other side, during bundle building, I have two variables which are used by the RAUG bundle BB class to say, please use this PKCSF and URI to sign my bundle. 
So that's yeah, pretty integrated in ROC already, so we just need to pass the correct pass. And for the fit image, for example, looks similar. Again, I depend on the key package, which brings in the key material and the definition, and use the role and call, in this case, you would MP image because we use the same image format and that is again passed the key as a URI, so it knows how to talk to HSMs and use those keys. Yeah, then I have a small demo, which is basically, yeah, I just built through the BSP and we can start this in QMO. Oh, oh, no, that doesn't work, just a moment. So at the mo the now it verifies the fit image, boots the kernel, the kernel loads its module signing key, starts the system, and as soon as it is booted, So I have an HTTP server running on my uh, laptop outside and well, it is not running. No, it is running. So this pulls the assigned bundle information, verifies the key. So I have the key information here and I could update the, the test system from that. And that's all using, in this case, keys in the soft HSM, but I could connect another, or a, a real HSM, set the URLs, and uh, use th that for signing, and the code path is exactly the same. Uh, oh, displays. Yeah, so... Maybe we have some time for discussion. Do we have others who see further use cases for that, other software components that would need to be signed? It would be interesting to, to add to the demo. Did you think about um, binary signing, like execution, checking also? Um, so this signs the kernel and so on, so, so the si it signs binaries, yeah? Or uh, no, or I mean the, the application in the image in the root FS. Okay, um, n not as individual binaries. Uh, in this case, we use DM Verity, so mm -hmm. it locks down the whole root file system, mm -hmm. which is usually much much simpler than yeah, verifying each individual application because I agree. Yeah, you still need to verify configuration files, directory names, and so on. That's difficult with just signing the applications. Okay. One further question is: um, How does uh, HSM look like? Is it is it I mean, that soft HSM, does it create a device then in, in the, your Linux? No, um, so the soft HSM just provides um, a shared object, mm -hmm. which implements the PKCSS, PKCS11 API, and that is yeah, loaded as uh, we are dynamic loading. Okay. By the, uh, sorry, let's, um, it's an OpenSSL engine, which then uses this PKCS11 engine and PKCS11 module. So it's several layers of OpenSSL, an adapter, and the PKCS11 module from soft HSM or a real HSM PKCS11 module from the vendor. And how is it connected to the signing to the server running that uh, HTTP? Is it via What's the interface of an HSM? Is it over IP or is it? It depends, is it, uh, it depends on the vendor. Okay, so can be a USB device yeah. as well. So, so okay. th uh, yeah. there is, for example, from uh, YubiKey, there's an HSM which is a simple USB device, and there's a Nitro HSM, which are several hundred euros, 
And then there are yeah, enterprise HSMs, which are rack-based systems, which are connected over the network. And then have your local USB <coughs> stick as authentication against the network device. But all of this is encapsulated in this PKCL7 API. So from, from our side, it all looks the same. OK, thank you. I have one of them with me. Just come by later. Oh, you, you, you oh yeah. <laughs> that one also works. But you can just store one single key on them, so that's a bit yeah. limited. Yeah. So if you would like to do the production signing on an error-gapped computer, how would you go about with that? Would you like have to clone everything and build everything from scratch, or can you take some parts and just sign? Yeah, so uh, in OE we usually have this uh, um, estate, which encapsulates the built um, artifacts, so we can transfer that if you want to reuse them. Some people want to rebuild everything. And then you uh, need to have your um, download mirror, which is also a standard mechanism to do offline builds in Yocto, and that just works the same. OK, but you, you copy like everything, the estates yes. and the downloads. Download and and then, you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then it's a quick build, but yeah. you, you still it more or less repeat It depends everything. on what you want to do. Some yeah. people just want to copy the downloads and build from a single verified checkout on an airgap computer. Others want to reuse the uh, estate because in the end you cannot be 100% sure that your estate is authentic or has not been modified by anyone. So you might want to rebuild, but yeah, depends on your, <laughs> your choice on your skills. Yeah. So, um, so, one of the arguments for putting stuff like this in OE Core is um, sort of the agreement with going into OE Core is you get better test coverage. Um, is this important enough that it should go where it is better tested? Is sort of my question. And how bad? I, I think it would benefit from better testing, of course. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, do we test outside OE Core? Do we test inside to OE Core? Um, yeah, because people are obviously going to depend on this for critical stuff. Yeah. And how do we, I mean, because I know that Richard will push back if you come and say, I need to put 13 things in. Yeah, um, I think, uh, yeah, we need to discuss about the requirements we w would need to pull in OE Core. Mm -hmm. um, but the way I have it right now with the demo, it's something that could run in uh, OE test image. So it could check that the, uh, at least the good case works. Yeah. You, can, you can build it with the soft edges M and the ver ver verification works in a way that it says all the keys match. You could add a negative test case so you have a different key that does, is corrupted in a way that you don't get to load the, the signed modules or something like that. But I'm not an expert in how the OE test farm works, so that yeah, yeah. If if, if someone knows, uh, we should discuss. Would this work with something like Vault? Would this work with something like a Vault signing server? A Vault? Vault. Never. Um, <laughs> as as long as ha is, it has a PKCS11 API, it works. We, we've seen bugs in vendor implementations, of course, but yeah, it, it should work. <laughs> yeah, so, so my idea would be to, to move the signing BB class in MetaOE. Maybe to, uh, that, that is just a single B, uh, BB class right now. So that should be easy, and then we can still discuss if we want to move it into core for better testing. And I'd probably move the demo to MetaRaw community. So there we have example integrations, and it also works as an integration demo for Rauk with module signing and so on. So then there we ha already have um, auto builds and so on. Does it also include generation of X509, or would that be new functionality? Um, it expect the X509 to be generated beforehand because that is part of the key material you put into it. So um, the key provider 
So usually like the the it, the HSM can generate the CSR, but then you have to actually have some kind of harness or something to generate the X509 with some intermediate CA or something, right? Yes, so, so, so the preparation of the key in the HSM is out of scope. So you, you need to have some way to generate these keys and certificates, put them in the HSM. At, at that point, yeah. you can use them for signing. Yeah, sorry, uh, I just skipped up some parts. So m many of these things, they actually generate the key inside the HSM, yes. right? So they're not in memory anywhere. So my, the reason why I'm saying this is that many bootstrapping mechanisms in IoT now expect like some kind of system X509 to bootstrap the, the whole uh, authentication chain, right? So I was just curious if we can make it easier or... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe this is a bit similar uh, as we have with the uh, RAUC verification key. So I have my signing key in the HSM together with the matching certificate. Right. And when I build a bundle, uh, build the image, I okay. flash in production, um, that includes the public key part. And that is extracted using th this mechanism. All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, you've obviously done a uh, bare box integration. Uh, would U-Boot integration be just as easy? Yeah, it, it, we basically use it the same way. So yeah. this U-Boot uh, MK image is used for generation of the fit image mm -hmm. and signing of it. And it also generates a device tree snippet, which includes the public key. Cool. And we import it in bare box, and U-Boot has, has a way to do the same. The same, yeah. Yeah, um, I'd like to see at least bits of this move into core. Um, if 13 new recipes might be a harder sell, but obviously if it's just start with the class and anything needed to just get the base yeah. up. So, so, so the, the biggest part of th that's missing is basically soft HSM and all this yeah, stack you need to access PKC11 modules from OpenSSL. So that are several different open source projects that yeah, are different recipes. And I think without soft HSM, it doesn't make much, much sense because you can't do the yeah. testing of the PKC. Yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm going to have a look at this. Yeah. Okay. okay, so the consensus seems to be it would be nice to have an OE core, but we need to work on it. Okay, so yeah, I think that's everything. If you've taken a look and have questions, come to me. So, yeah. Thank you.